Hello, and welcome to another edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. Please hit the subscribe button if you are not a subscriber already. Please hit the like button, no matter who you are. And um, yes, I'm going to roll three videos roll back to back to back in the same sweatshirt. Love you, babe. Love you, mom. Uh, okay, so last video I just did, literally uh, just just uploaded it, so who knows how long it's going to take, it was about the first time I shot shot dope which was inside Chino, staying on the same topic in the same prison. All right, now I'm rolling. Now I've done my first shot of joke, first shot of dope, and it's on and popping. Uh, as I told you, I was a medical clerk. We had a lot of hustles. Uh, wasn't getting too much money from the street at the time. Uh, I think mom sent me $100 a month. I think that's what I got. I think maybe I got 150 Whatever the, the canteen draw was, I think maybe, maybe I did get 150 And I would got a package every uh, three months whenever I was able to. But cranked out a lot of money uh, doing soft shoe chronos. That is people that can't have, uh, can't wear. People wanted to wear certain tennis shoes or shoes to visitation uh, because they would sometimes have drugs put in identical shoes or, or whatever the case was, uh, you can come to me and I can get you a doctor slip, the course that I forged. Matter of fact, there's so many forgeries of mine running around Chino from 1995, lower bunk pass. Oh, and um, they used to charge $5 for medical. So if you had a medical problem, they'd take $5 off your books if you went in. Uh, how it worked was there was a piece of paper, you signed it and then the stack sat on the nurse's desk. Well, you can pay me $2 in commissary. My ear itches, sorry. $2 in commissary. I'd roll up in there, look at your name, pull it out, boom. You give me $2, you save yourself $3. Guys did that nonstop. Um, also, we pulled some urine tests a few times, but that didn't always work out, and one of the clerk got his ass beat over it. <laughs> so I was just thinking about it. Now, that could be another whole story. All right, so let's go. So now I'm getting high, heroin, doing some speed, but now speed's whoosh, once I once I once I touch those opiates, man, forget all the rest. Um went through that. Oh, I had that, I had the rest of that gram, didn't sell a drop of it. Man, I just said in the last video I got high like 10, 12 times. What I, I went I rolled through that gram and I got people high, you know, my friends, my new friends especially. Uh and that brings me to this. So in Chino, they had a a bunch of different groups. So if you went to like Narcotics Anonymous, that was one group. AA, that's another group. If you're a Catholic, you, that can be considered a group or a Muslim or a whatever. I was friend of the Jewish fellowship. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about that. <laughs> so this is how it worked. There was 17 people that were Jews or friend of the Jewish fellowship. Now, in Chino at that time, used to have food drives. So we can order free world food up with money from our books. So let's say that we wanted pizza. The Jews might get pizza this weekend. Uh, the Muslims might get soul food, and, I, and I'm not making jokes right there, but they did a lot. And then uh, the Catholic organization uh, would get, you know, chicken or whatever the deal was. And uh, the money that they made would go into their fund, and then that fund would they would spend on commissary. So they would have commissary inside their, their uh, room or, or whatever for, like, for example, the Jews. They have, they had the, the, you know, where, where all the, the religious services were held, a little area. Then they had an area with like couches where people just hung out. Uh, the rabbi only came in, Mel Silverstein, I think his name was. Wow. He normally stayed across the sea, street at CIW with the women. Yeah, it's a player. Uh, he came in like once a month. And uh, this dude, like, like some one time brought in a porno. <laughs> We had movies, so we couldn't watch any movies I want. And I'm going to tell you, you don't watch porn in prison with dudes. It's not cool. <laughs> but uh, so we had movies. So the, the, the temple 
was a place to actually hang out. You had food you can eat that, that, that was for free, as long as you're a member or a, a friend of the fellowship. Uh, you had that. Then you had uh, um, other perks, the coffee, the, the hot chocolate that was just nonstop. And then there was the heroin shooting. That was the best spot to shoot dope, was inside the temple. There was a guy, his name was Fred. He was from Miami. He was an old rich Jew. I don't know. I forgot what he was in prison for, uh, but he had a lot of money and he was the, the clerk. He ran, he tried to run um, uh, the temple, um, but he was only, he'd stay in so long and then Kong would come in. Who is Kong? Kong was half African-American half Mexican Jew. He converted when he was in San Quentin. He was 60 years old, served all but, he'd been in prison since he was 18, all but about two years. So he was he was an old head who'd been in prison all his life and he was an old dope fan. Yes, he was actually very serious about his religion, uh, but he was probably a little bit more serious about his dope shooting. <laughs> and, uh, that's who I ended up getting high with a lot. Why? Because we're in a safe zone uh, that is inside the temple. Cops don't go in there. And I can go get dope, kick him down a little bit. You know, I can go buy a clavo, you know, a good chunk, kick him down a little bit, and it was cheap, you know. Uh, I didn't know how to hit myself. So I didn't know how to use a syringe. So I always needed somebody to hit me. I didn't, I didn't. The whole time I was in Chino, I never knew how to hit myself. I didn't learn how to hit myself until years later when I went to Leavenworth and uh, started getting uh, a binky, an outfit for dummies is what they really are. But we had real syringes in Chino and I, I never, never learned how to do it. So Kong knew that I had a hell of a hustle. He knew that I had access to dope. So he was, you know, of course he, he wanted me around him. I kicked him down for free. Shoot me up, I give you a paper or whatever most of the time. It worked out kind of like that. Or there was like, you know, give me four drops or give me the cotton or whatever the deal was. Well, we, we went, we went on our, we, we were doing our thing. Um, and when you are 14 days to the house in California, at least used to, they, they put you on what's called S time. S time means that you can no longer work. And the idea is they want you to settle down, think about, you know, start reflecting on you're getting ready to go home, take this time to yourself. Uh, finish up all whatever you got to finish up. That's kind of the general thinking behind uh, taking you off work, you know, 14 days. Well, what that did to me was fucked off my money because working inside the hospital was my hustle. You know, I'd go pull a syringe and have $20, you know. Um, papers of dope, I forgot how much. Yeah, there were, damn, I just forgot. It's got that mix, mixed up. Guy had to be like 20 bucks. I know grams of heroin back then were, uh, of anywhere from two to three hundred dollars, depending. Um, I tried to get you know half half grams and grams or whatever. Uh, it, well, I said I tried. I'm just yeah. so what's what just happened right now as I was mixing places Chino and Leavenworth and you know it just got all a little confusing because uh, I because it was only tar in Chino. It's all I ever did was tar which is Mexi brown Mexican heroin for people that don't know, or Mexican mud, there's a lot of different things for it. Um, okay, so here's what goes down. I get put on S time, I'm 14 days to the gate. Got no hustle, wanna get high. One day, I'm about 12 days to the door, 11 days to the door, I'm sorry. And I'm inside the, the temple with Kong, we both wanna get high. He walks outside and all of a sudden he kind of takes off. He goes by the tennis courts. So all of a sudden I hear, Rob, Rob, Rob. I walk outside and I go, huh? And he goes, all right, all right. <laughs> Runs back inside. He's like, all right, all right. Get the outfit, get the cooker. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? He's like, get the outfits, get the cooker. I'm like, uh, all right, what do you got? He's like, man, uh, you just got a gram. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, a gram of Coke and a gram of heroin. I'm like, what? 
He was like, yeah, man, the dude, uh, some black dude uh, from Hawthorne, I'll never forget, some black dude from Hawthorne, and, and uh, he uh, he would only sell a gram of Coke with the gram of, a gram of heroin if you bought a gram of Coke, too. And it was like $400 for both or something. And I'm like, all right, well, how am I supposed to pay? He goes, you ain't got to pay, you're going home. And I said, man, I got 11 days. And he goes, what? And I said, yeah, I got 11. Now, there's a 10-day rule in California back then. If you're going to send somebody money on the street, if you're going to have your people send money to uh, somebody's family on the street, you got 10 days to get that money there. If you didn't get that money there, I mean, it was there was not really much talking about it. Okay, so I've got 11 days. So what do we do? Bring the dope back? <laughs> That's not going to happen. It's in our hands. So I just said, fuck, let's roll with it. Well, first time I did a speedball, heroin and coke mixed up, boom. And I'm going to tell you, because you hear rumors about this, and especially you hear rumors of, or you hear that when girls shoot dope, they nut on themselves. I don't know what I, <laughs> uh, when I, when he put that Coke and that heroin and that needle together and mixed it, it was, I, th there's, there's nothing, there, like I said, there's no better feeling than heroin. This was a, an incredible feeling. It was, it was just, <laughs> it's like your spun ducky woo woo. I don't know, but it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was wild, but I actually blew fucking sperm. <laughs> no soft, Blue, blue one, unbelievable. I could, I could not believe it. I heard, I heard about it, but it happened. And uh, also, I remember uh, it was ten minutes to four. We had to be inside the, the. We were supposed to be locked in our units at like f fifteen minutes to four. It's ten minutes, and I remember I'm hurrying back to the unit after I just did the shot. After I just blew one, and I'm walking around the corner, and I just blew chunks. Blew, I started heaving. Get vomiting from the, the dope. And there's cops walking. <laughs> and I don't know why they didn't, uh, you know, like pull me up and have a, piss, a test or whatever, but I, I didn't. So here's what happens. We did that in two days. We just boom, da boom, da boom, da boom, just shot, shot, shot. Now I'm on, uh, now, now I want to get higher. So now I'm less than 10 days. And I went around scumbagging it. I went around getting dope on, okay, I'm going to have, I'll send your money in 10 days, send your money. And so there was six, six or seven people, six or seven addresses I had on the day that I went home for money owed from dope that I was just burning, just running around burning people. So here's what goes down. I told you we had 10 days, 11 days to the gate. Back then we got released on Saturdays. I don't think they do now. And some people might say no, whatever. We got released on a Saturday. I got released on a Saturday telling you. So this was in, cause I, I got into it with somebody over this before. Um, the Friday that I owed this guy money. So the Friday he would have, so in California, people didn't press up on you. They didn't come and, Hey, Hey, homes, you got that money. Hey, home, you got that money. Hey, dude, Hey, Wood, you got that money. They didn't do that. You know, Leavenworth later on, that was different. You just said it and there was no talk and it was there. And then they came to talk to you on the 10th day, or it wasn't talk, period. So on the day that, you know, I'm supposed to be confronted or whatever's gonna happen, fucking wouldn't you know, fog rolls in during the morning, this super huge blanket of fog just covers Chino and we all got locked down. The entire day, the entire night, Fog just stayed there. It was like God coming in. And I hate to use religious terms. God just going and saving my ass. Just threw some fog down. Okay. So now I got the next day. Well, on the next day, I'm getting released. And I know it. And I found out I was supposed to be released like at 9 o'clock. The guy that I owed money to was, uh, he lived, uh, he lived, uh, so he lived to the right of where I lived. I wanted to get high. The morning I was getting released, I wanted to get high. I was jonesing to get high. Well, I knew where I can go get a paper in the, in the east, in the east, east, east hall, whatever it's called. So I carry my ass over there, and they start saying, "Rosso, Rosso for release, Rosso for release." 
I hear that as I'm walking past r and receiving, receiving and release is what it's called. In the feds, it's called receiving and discharge. In the, California, it was receiving and release. I walk past r and where I'm supposed to be going to go get a paper of dope, and they're calling my name already. Dope fiend shit, right? Yeah, it's true. So I go in, and I go to this Mexican dude. I get a paper. I get my shot. I am 45 minutes late for release. I've got the van held up. In Chino, you have a van that carries your ass out, but you've got other people that are being released too. They're screaming for my name. <laughs> They're getting high. And I was really worried that this Mexican dude that I'm telling him I'm paying him on commissary was, yeah, I mean, I was, it, that was, you're talking about grimy stuff here. I get high. I walk back and I see the black dude I owe money to and his friends and I go, er, and I cut around and I go the other way. Now this is, the, the track's like a mile and a half, it's long. So I cut the other way, <laughs> go to r, r I make it to their, they fucking, cut. there's dudes that are waiting, there are people are waiting, they're cussing me out. Of course I would too, they were, they had, they were 100% in the ride. We go to get in the van, the black guy that I owed that money to for the, <laughs> sees me. And I'm laughing. Man, I'm not, I wasn't laughing. I just hurried up in the van. And they're just like, hey, 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 hey. And I, <laughs> I was just trying to like scoot in between a couple people and uh, skated off. Now, let me tell you guys, I had those addresses, right? I got released in September of 1996. By February of 1997, I had over $100,000 that I made from uh, from dealing drugs on the street. Uh, I've, I've said it in the video about my case. I never made that much money so fast in my life. Uh, went to California on January the 19th. Um, by by the 1st of May, I had over 100000 So it was 30 days from the 19th. But what I did was, I remember one day, I thought to myself, Robert, you're high. I was... Did, I was Doing, drinking meth in my coffee, smoking weed, drinking alcohol. You're high and you're, you're gonna go back to prison <laughs> and you're on parole and the chances of you going back to the California Department of Corrections is very real. You better take care of those fucking debts that you owed because if I go back there, it's gonna be on if I run across the wrong person. And you know what I did? I got all those receipts, which I kept and I sent everybody money that I owed every single person in a couple and I put little I'm sorry notes in it and in a couple cases I think I put like I, I do like a money order and I put like a hundred dollars in it and a couple you know I was I had a bunch of money uh the two of the money orders came back to me as like the wrong addresses you know and I always thought if I went back I never went back to California but that's what happened so double part story uh that's that being a dope fiend uh, in the day of my release, I was running around, they're yelling my name and I'm trying to get high. Um, and I might as well throw this out there. I made a lot of heroin connections when I was in the CDC with the intent that I was going to go out there and do heroin. I had every intention of leaving prison and, and getting high. Uh, I did snort some sometimes and I kept telling myself when I get out, I'm not going to use a needle because I don't want people to see me use a needle. I don't want to only junkies do that. It's cool to do it in prison, but not on the street. And I was just planned on snorting. Do you know that I never, ever did heroin on the street? To this day, I've never seen heroin on the street. Uh, there was one time when a guy that was getting meth from me, and I'm getting packages of drugs in the mail, said, hey, can you get some heroin? And I said, yeah, I can. So I called up to the person who was getting uh, sending the packages uh, of coke or meth, I forgot which one. And uh, no, no, can get it, yes. But I had to wait like two extra days before I can get that. So it would have held up the package that we already have being sent. And I, I said, fuck it. I don't know what would have happened to me if I would have started doing heroin. Who knows? I was getting an ounce to do. Um, anyway, that's my story. I'm going to go change a shirt, drink a cup of coffee, and make another video.